Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Hi everyone, this is Fernando with Texas United Realty, and I wanted to welcome you. Uh, to, tonight, we're gonna be uh, focusing on a quick guide on the progression of a lease transaction uh, from start to finish. I know uh, some of you have mentors and we've been pushing really hard to, to generate, uh, you know, get your phone uh, ringing by pushing a lot of leases. And, and I've been uh, kind of studying what's been happening and I've been noticing that there's been a lot of questions as far as, you know, just the overall, you know, what kind of applications and documents are needed and, you know, there's driver's licenses and all, you know, the monies, the security deposits, and it just seems very confusing. So um, I gathered this presentation to hopefully it'll help you guys out. And of course we're recording it as well. So you can, playback uh, at a future date. So um, the agenda for tonight is prerequisite needed to submit an application. Um, overview of what to anticipate on the lease transaction. And I've broken down uh, the lease um, transaction into three phases, which I'll talk about. Uh, and this will be very helpful when you uh, speak to your clients as well. How to convert, also, I'll give you a bonus here, how to convert tenants into potential buyers. Uh, that's something that you kind of don't think about. You're like, wait a minute, what? Uh, if they're looking for a lease, well, you can also uh, convert them to potential buyers, and I'll show you some examples of that. Okay. So pre-qualifying your clients first. Uh, one thing that I always tell my students is you have to pre-qualify your clients. And this is in the initial uh, first phone call or when you meet them in person or what have you. It's just the first interaction with a potential tenant, uh, client, um, and it's learning about them, you know, because you know, you're going to mention to them that landlords look at credit scores, they look at criminal background, they look at rental history, like broken leases, which they hate, uh, and employee verification, which I'm gonna talk about, you know, the qualifications for, for that, which is three times the rent. So, so you as an, as an agent, um, your, your duty is to ask, um, is ask them, you know, hey, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Do you know what your credit score is? And, you know, and of course, they always say, I don't know. <laughs> I get that a lot. Well, I don't know what my credit score is. Well, you know, you can go to creditkarma.com. You can go to your bank, you know, because uh, all these online banking uh, um, um, places, they have, you know, you go to online and you can check your credit score there. So there's just many places you can check your credit score. And, and uh, one tip is I always ask the tenant to give me as much information regarding their background as possible so I can help them better. You know, the more they tell me, the better I can assist them and I need to know their situation. So landlords usually ask for the following as a start to the application process. Tenants, tenants must earn a combined gross monthly salary uh, of three times the monthly rent. And that's combined. So, you know, the significant other and the other person or whoever it is, all the tenants combined, uh, they need to earn three times the rent. That's a requirement that mm, probably 99% of the landlords require. There are times where you might hear 3.5 times. Uh, I have seen that before where they're asking for 3.5 3 times the rent. So, for example, if the rent is 1500 that they're focusing on, the the combined salary should be four thousand five hundred dollars, which is a lot of money. Um, at, at one, you know, um, you know, look. So um, they also like to see credit scores sometimes between five forty and five eighty, because normally landlords understand that that the reason why they're renting is because they can't afford a house. So typically we see things where landlords accept 580, they might accept 560, they might accept 540s. It all depends on the landlord, of course. 
Another thing is they, they we need to see uh, colored copies of government issued picture IDs. So driver's licenses, passports, whatever it is with the picture ID. But one thing that I, I have noticed in my experience is that sometimes they give, uh, the tenants give us expired driver's licenses. And no, that's not valid. It has to be current driver's licenses. Thus, that's why I put it in red. Um, we also require uh, paycheck stubs or, you know, which is one to two months. Uh, so if, if the tenants get paid once a week, then we need four paychecks. If the tenants get paid bi-weekly you know, or, you know, bi-monthly, then it's two paychecks. Uh, if they're self-employed, then we need to see income tax returns, preferably the year, you know, the, the year that just passed. Um, application fees uh, are typically anywhere from $35 to $75 per adult, and these are non-refundable. And this application fee gets sent to, with the lease application, to the listing agent. Another thing is that I always ask and when I'm doing pre-qualify is they should have the first month's rent and security deposit ready to go. Because when we're looking at houses and we submit an application and they can get approved within 24 to 48 hours, well, guess what the landlord's gonna be asking for? Give us the money. And I don't want your tenants telling you, oh, can you wait until the end of the month? That's not gonna fly. So you need to tell the, your, your clients, do you have the money ready to go? If the tenants do not have all the money, then advise them that it would be best for them to wait on looking at rentals until they have all the money. I know this sounds kind of like, wow, you know, you don't want to show many houses, but it, you're going to be wasting everybody's time, especially theirs. Because if they have to tell you to tell the listing agent, oh, we, we don't have all the money, can the landlord wait? Because I only have half of the deposit. The landlord's going to already start feeling like, oh, great. What else is going to happen in the future? Okay. I believe uh, Carol has something to add. I was going to say, like you said, sometimes it might sound kind of harsh to them like that, but <clears throat> I always tell them that, hey, I don't want to see that look of disappointment on your face when you find the house you want and we're not ready for it yet. Right, right, right. And, and by the way, Carol Dunn, she's one of our, um, um, my mentees and friend, and she's an expert in leases. She's done so many of them, so she's definitely a, somebody to listen to. <laughs> you are the expert. Um, or you become an expert. So the way I've broken down leases is into three phases. Okay. The lease transaction um, will be have phase one, which is lease applications and submittal. And then phase two is the lease agreement and walkthrough. And then phase three, which is the move in, which is the exciting part. That's when we get paid, you can say. So phase one, lease applications and submittal. Um, instructions uh, are usually provided by the listing agent on how to submit a lease application. Lease application is presented to the listing agent. And in a minute, I'll show you examples of the lease application uh, or the landlord via email. Uh, the lease application will also contain the driver copies of the driver's licenses. There are some landlords that require social security card copies as well. Uh, of course, recent paycheck stubs, and of course, if, if they're um, self-employed, we need the income tax return. And of course, the application fee itself. Um, the application process for approval may take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours, and we're talking about business hours. However, it all depends on how fast the employers or landlords may take to provide responses. So for example, if uh, when we submit an application in, and then uh, the landlord's trying to verify um, the land, the uh, current la their current landlord uh, as far as rental history, and the landlord's never calling us back as a listing agent. They're never returning our phone calls. Well, that's going to delay the process. But in during that 
during that step, what we'll do as a listing agent is we'll tell, we'll inform the buyer agent uh, or the tenant, hey, can you please ask your landlord to call us or respond to our message? Uh, besides the lease applications, the other two documents that you should have signed uh, initially is the IABS and the broker notice to tenant documents. And I'll show you examples on that. There are times where uh, the lease application uh, instructions by the uh, listing agent says, hey, um, it has to be online. Don't send me anything. Uh, we use somebody called like mysmartmove.com, for example. And this is a um, tenant uh, online application process. And so there your tenants are gonna go online to my smart move. This is just an example. There's others like this, but uh, this is the most popular one, mysmartmove.com. And tenants will automatically go in there, they'll log in, they'll submit all the required documents and they'll pay through there. Uh, one thing I, I do ask uh, that you remind your tenants is to make sure they put your name somewhere in that application process. That way you can get credit for it. And of course you get the commission too. Um, one thing that I do uh, as a tip is uh, while we're working on this process um, in phase one, is I usually like the, like the tenants to have a plan B on another lease home in case this one does not get approved. Uh, that way we can have this, you know, the lease application ready to go on the second choice. And if for some reason they don't approve us, we can immediately um, execute plan B and, and you know, submit the, the lease. Because they, they, uh, it's very emotional um, to the tenants and they start getting discouraged. And you want to be telling them and encouraging them, hey, remember, we got a plan B now, so let's just execute that. Okay, so let's look at some document examples. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you have to do the information about broker services. The IBS, which is this one right here, contains the, I'm sure most of you already seen this. Um, then you do the, here's the uh, an example of a lease application. This is a standard uh, TREC lease ap application. We all use it as realtors. Um, and this is what they fill out. They can fill it out through dot loop or zip forms or manually with the typewriter, with their pens, whatever they want. Um, but one thing that's very important, which I've highlighted in yellow, is to make sure that your name and your contact information here, because it says your applicant was referred to landlord by, and here's where you get credit and you get the commission, um, you know, assigned to you. So make sure that that's in there. And of course, what's important to the landlord is like social security numbers, driver's license numbers, so they can run the uh, background check. Uh, this is about four pages long and they fill all this out. You don't touch it. They have to fill it out. And they type in the current employer, previous employer, what have you. Uh, one thing that's also uh, important is do they have any pets? Um, and you, they need to ensure that they fill that out. Now, one thing that, um, that I tell my potential uh, prospects of my clients that I'm helping personally is I tell them, hey, in the application it says, ha has applicant ever, and if you see ever been convicted of a crime, it doesn't say, you know, in the last over, you know, 10 years or 20 years, it just says ever. So whenever I talk, whenever I talk to my clients, uh, they, you know, they might say, well, it happened when I was 18 years old and I'm 30 now. Well, guess what? It's still gonna show up on the tenant verification report. So it's better to uh, answer honestly in the application because here it says, has applicant ever been convicted? It doesn't say over the last 10 years. So make sure that that's important because if they do, uh, uh, lie on this application, then they're probably not going to get approved because the report's going to show something else. Another thing is to make sure as a, as a realtor is to make sure that they sign it. So page three is signed and then page four is also signed as well. So those are the two things uh, or a couple things that you need to watch out for. Uh, and then the last form that you do uh, that you use is the broker notice to tenant. 
This is a requirement from Rick Rogers, uh, Texas Nevada Realty. So always have them fill out this form. This just protects you stating that you're not an inspector and the tenants uh, are responsible to uh, physically look at the condition of the property. You're not. Uh, so they can condu even conduct inspections if they want. So you, you sign this and then they sign it and you know, that's done. So this form, the lease application and the IBS, they're the ones that you need uh, primarily in the beginning stages of the phase, uh, phase one. Okay, so now into phase two. Phase two, lease agreement is, is generated, created. Uh, there's a walkthrough that sometimes happens. I usually like to do walkthroughs uh, personally. Uh, clients are approved. A listing agent will generate the lease agreement, uh, send it to you as a buyer agent, um, and you can review it and then ask questions if you don't understand certain paragraphs or certain terms and conditions. Uh, the listing agent may ask for a security deposit to be delivered during that time, um, even though it's commencing at a later date. As far as the lease commencement date, uh, the listing or buyer agent may schedule a walkthrough uh, before the move in. I usually like to do this because I can check to see if the toilet's flush, if all the appliances are working, uh, garbage disposals are working, ceiling fans are working, light switch come on. It's amazing when I'm doing stuff like this, uh, I actually impress my clients because they say, wow, if Fernanda's doing this, can you imagine when, when we're ready to buy a house? So this is an impression that you can make here. Um, and then once you, you do check everything and if you see something that's not working uh, correctly, keep in mind, they haven't moved in yet, okay? We're in phase two. Uh, this is an important step because uh, you can report the problem to the listing agent. You know, I usually like to take pictures of the problem uh, if you can, or a description of the problem and then I usually ask the listing agent to resolve these problems before move-in, okay? So now phase three. So we're in the final stages of moving in. Uh, the buyer agent or listing agent will schedule a time to meet the tenants at the rental house, uh, receive any monies that are, are, are needed. It could be the security deposit might be delivered already, but it's missing the first month's rent. And then uh, the keys are handed to the tenant at that time. Um, the, also, the uh, either the buyer or the listing agent will provide a um, inventory condition form to fill out to the tenants. And this condition form is just noting what is wrong with the house as they're moving in, what they can see visu visually. Uh, and it's got a time period, like sometimes seven days. Uh, to, to complete, but it's not a repair request. It's just, this is the condition of the house when I moved in, and whenever they move out two years from now, or three years from now, or seven years from now, this is the way I left it, the way, you, you, the way I saw it seven years ago, okay? So, how to, how to convert a tenant to potential buyers? This is my favorite page. Um, usually during your conversation, you're going to notice that you're going to be telling uh, your potential clients, oh, well, you got bad credit and you know they might ask you for two deposits and, you know, plus first month's rent. And they're going to say, how much is that? Well, $4,500. And they're like, wow, might as well buy a house. You go, as a matter of fact, have you thought about buying a house? Uh, why don't you try? Why don't you try to get pre-approved for the house? It doesn't hurt to try. And what I do in my experience is um, whenever I'm helping them find a lease and I'm telling them they should, they should get pre-approved, I'll tell them, I said, I'll, we'll still go see houses for lease. You know, that's not gonna stop. But at the same time, you could be, you know, getting pre-approved for a house. And if they don't get approved, then the lender will tell them what needs to be resolved in order to qualify. And that might be, oh, you need to pay down your student, you know, your student loan. 
you need to uh, pay down this car note, uh, you need to do this, you need to do that. Well, now they have an action plan. And that action plan, they can execute during the terms of the lease. And that could be a year lease, two years lease, however long they stay, but you're in contact with them. Uh, you're, you know, you're sending them holiday cards, you're communicating with them to say hi and checking in throughout the entire uh, lease. It could be like every three months, you know, when you check in. Uh, and then towards the end of the lease, 60 days before, try to set a reminder somewhere where it says, hey, their lease is going to be up in 60 days. That's when you call them and say, hey, how's it going, Johnny? How you doing? How's the family doing? Hey, do you know that your uh, 60 days are going to be uh, up? Uh, I mean, your lease is going to be up in 60 days. Uh, they go, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, we were thinking about you. Well, uh, you guys think you're ready to buy a house? Yeah, well, we're going to try to, uh, we completed all those, uh, the action plan that we've been working on throughout the 10 months and we, we, we've got it and uh, we're going to get pre-approved now and try it out again. And you never know. Um, I always tell my mentees, you should have a 18 month pipeline. Leases are so um, critical in that pipeline because they're potential buyers for the future. And their leases are 12 months or 24 months long. But if, you're, if you stay in contact with them, then they're gonna be the ones contacting you because they already know you, okay? So that's something that, that you should do, uh, think about and create that in your goal sheet. So here's some other uh, tips. Uh, if the t tenants have certain background issues, ask them to send you an email with to whom it may concern and then list briefly the issue. You can then um, create a PDF file of that email and then send it within your lease application. That way, whenever you submit it to the listing agent, they already have a copy of the to whom it may concern letter. Of course, don't make it too long. Um, have it brief. Um, uh, again, just repeating the, the, the last tip is, you know, make sure your tenants have first month and security deposit in the bank at the time you're showing houses. Uh, you don't want to delay, uh, have any delays on this. Also, uh, if the tenant has issues in their background um, or credit scores or by rental history or what have you, um, what I normally do is um, I, um, I actually contact the listing agent and ask them would they accept this particular situation, you know? So what I do is I'll have the lease application, provide all the paycheck stubs, driver's license, and, and just package all that up and then send it, I'll send a list to um, the tenants to see which house they might be interested in. And they'll tell me, okay, out of these 10 houses, Fernando, you send us, I only like five of them. Then you can say, okay, well, I'm going to contact the listing agent uh, of each one of those houses through email and send them the application and all the data. And then tell them, would you accept the situation from my client? Of course, they're going to say no, no. One might say maybe, and then... If they say maybe, then you can go show the house. That way you you can say that the landlord already kind of saw their application and they're willing to work with your client. Uh, one thing too that you can think about uh, as far as generating money and leads out of leases is conduct open houses on leases as well. A lot of people don't realize, they always think about uh, open houses as just a house for sale but I've done in the past open houses also on uh, rentals as well. And my favorite ones are the ones that are for sale and for lease at the same time. And I love those kind because of course you only, you're in one house only, but you can announce it separately as for uh, open house that's a rental and then open house as a for sale. And you have two different clientels coming in. And some of them, you know, that um, are looking to rent uh, might be going, well, you're also selling this house? And you say, yes. Well, then you can say, oh, have you thought about getting pre-approved? And they're like, no, we never thought about that. 
And who knows, you might convert them into a, uh, buyers instead of uh, tenants. So uh, that's pretty much my presentation. Um, we try to hit only 20 minutes on our webinars. But uh, let me know uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, these leases. Uh, but before we start, uh, I start asking, answering questions. Um, on our tur uh, training folder, I do have a uh, PDF file with the, with the leases, uh, lease phases, I mean, that kind of gives you a little synopsis of what I just talked about as well. Okay. All right, so let's go to questions. See if anybody has any questions. I know leases, sometimes they seem like intimidating, um, but uh, they're not very, comp they're not complex, uh, okay? Uh, you just need practice, of course. So make sure you uh, unmute your, um, okay, I think I've unmuted people here. Mm. Uh, again, I'm Fernando. If, uh, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just typed it in the chat. I know we could talk now. But um, how soon before a um, person's lease is up should they start looking for a new rental? Yeah, so that's a very good question. For uh, apartment complexes, they're asking to be 60 days, mm -hmm. which I don't like. Uh, but for uh, our houses, normal houses, regular houses, they're usually 30 days okay. as far as when you have to notify the landlord that you're moving in, I mean, moving out, or you're going to extend the lease. So whenever you're working with clients that are leasing already currently, I would advise you to, to contact them like 45 days before. Okay. okay. Um, and, and uh, that way the, the first 15 days can be more like, you know, are they really going to move out? Yes or no. Maybe they want to go with you to see some other houses, another area, but yeah, that's what I usually like to do. I hope I answered your question. I don't know if I did. Yes, that was good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Apartment complexes are really um, complicated with the 60 day rule that they have for uh, notification from the tenant to tell them that they're moving out. And those can be a really big headache. Mm. Um, and sometimes and, they pay 100%. I'm sorry? Sometimes they pay 100%, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, apartment complexes, uh, as far as you helping uh, uh, tenants find apartment complexes, uh, you can use apartmentdata.com. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did a webinar on this, I think, two weeks ago. Um, so there's a recording on that one. But that one, yeah, some of them pay a hundred a percent, others one fifty, others one twenty five. So yeah, I'm talking about when they need to move out of an apartment complex into somewhere else. They need to give sixty day notice to the to the apartment complex. But yeah, that is good money, um, and leases are real good money. If you guys can can target, you know, four leases a month, and let's just say that you make I don't know. $500 net, you know, especially if you're in the mentor program, uh, you can make $500 net. That's $2,000 a month just in leases alone. And they don't take that long. I'm talking about houses, not apartment complexes. Apartment complexes take 60 days to get paid. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> but I'm talking about houses. Hey, Fernando, how you doing? Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, no, I'm a woman. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is Philippa. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah, I've spoken to you before. Okay. Um, my question or my suggestion is to really be careful to look at the commissions because I did a lease and the commission was only three hundred dollars. Yes. And then Op City got thirty five percent, and then. Right. Uh, Texas United got thirty percent, and then I got what was left over. Correct. And um, they went through like some company and like they really try to cut you out. Yes. Once you do the application, they, they kind of cut you out. Like they, nobody contacts you anymore. They Correct. contact the, the client. So Correct. I didn't like that too much. Oh yeah. And, and like I, I, uh, I had, 
I had one where um, they never paid me. <laughs> oh. And it was a regular house. It wasn't even an apartment complex. Oh. And uh, I just, I, I would call and call and they would say, yeah, the check's in the mail. And then Jeannie Rogers, the owner of the company started calling and I lost it. So yeah, I mean, I have that, one and, and that wasn't, and that wasn't even under the mentor program or anything. It was just my own $250. But. Well, I have one under an apartment complex and my client moved in um, December 1st and they sold the complex December 18th. I have mm -hmm. yet to get anything. That was my first transaction with Texas yeah. United. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. You got to be careful with uh, definitely with leases. Um, I tend to kind of I like to focus on leases that are close to two thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Those are tend to be a, the nicer ones and yeah. the ones that you kind of don't have headaches. So, but those are good good inputs. I think I, I'm getting some chat around here. Uh, how soon before a person leases up these? Okay, you already. What? Thank you for that. Okay. How can we do? Oh, how can we do background checks? So there's a question about that. Now, uh, Rick Rogers, uh, Texas United Realty. What you do if you're the listing agent? If you're the listing agent, then those background checks can be done by us at Texas United Realty. Uh, we have a company called Zip Reports based in California, and it's forty-five dollar application fee per adult and you send you uh, send the uh, the lease application to Rick Rogers and then he'll submit it and do run the tenant verification report and then send it back to you you do not do any background checks okay only Texas United Realty does if you're the buyer agent and and on the tenant side because remember I was talking about the listing agent side now you're the buyer agent on the on the other side of the fence. That it, the background check is done by the listing agent or <coughs> or the landlord. That's why uh, that's why I kind of said mysmartmove.com. They might use that. So you as a buyer agent, you're not supposed to run <coughs> any background check. Okay. Uh, I think that's all the questions I had on the chat. Um, Fernando. Yes. If um, uh, the listing agent received the applications, uh, he can um, send an email to the tenants asking for the application fee directly. It's okay. Yes. So the okay. way the the way the application fee works is, uh, and that's a good question. I can I think someone here. So, um, is the the tenants will give you the money. If, okay, so let me just uh, give you this example. The listing agent says, hey, send me the application fee by going to my broker office and dropping off the $45 there. Mm -hmm. Well, what you can do is you can grab the $45 from your client and then drive to the office and drop it off. Mm -hmm. Or your clients can drive to the broker office and drop it off. Okay. Because yeah. the listing agent said to me that he will send his smart move link yes. to my clients. Right. That it's okay? Yes. He can do, uh, okay. Yeah, because my smart move is a, is a popular website for landlords to use, and that's how they get paid through that process as far as the application fee. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I just want another tip that I didn't write on this presentation is I, I carry a, um, a receipts book. I went to Walmart or I, when I go to Walmart, I buy a receipts book. And if somebody ever gives me cash, like $45 for an applicant, I write a receipt that I received the $45 cash and then I give them a receipt that I received it. It's mm -hmm. just, I, it's not like, I mean, it's just something for them to feel like they gave me money and I wrote it down that they gave me money. Okay. But it actually goes, but we're not doing that as much anymore. Uh, now people are using Zelle and Cash App and PayPal and all hmm. these other forms of sending yeah, money. Funny. Yeah, we're back in the old days. It was a lot of cash, mm -hmm. uh, but now it's all electronic kind of stuff, and we're not carrying money anymore. Mm -hmm. How old yeah. age you're? What, like forty? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm, 50, I'm fifty-three, but thanks. Um, but okay, those are good questions. Uh, I. 
I hope this this presentation give you a little bit of guidance. You know, it's not uh, really hard. I know Carol, you you're an expert. Is there any any like tips that you can give the the team, Carol? I know you do a lot of leases. I think you're done like 25, 30 leases. Um, it's kind of like I wish. I, it's just kind of like to me. You tell them it's like you're looking for a home for their kids or for yourself and. You tell them you're going to do the best job possible and, um, and stay with those uh, those other brokers. If they're not paying you, just call the broker directly or call our broker directly, and our broker will take care of business. Trust me, it's happened before. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, let's wrap it up. I know everybody's tired and all that good stuff. And, uh, and if you have any questions, uh, regarding leases, you can always contact me or any of your mentors. Um, but, uh, try to make some money, at least two, four leases a, a month. And you know, it, it's extra money and they, be, and they become your clients, your future clients to buy houses. Yeah. Right. Did, so, did you answer Yesenia about the online applications? uh oh there's a let me see thanks what if oh what if what if they have an online application oh yeah so if they have an online application they just there's nothing uh i mean they have to go that route actually i prefer an online an online application but we all, all that's going to happen is you're not going to have a copy of it right yeah that but that's okay the beginning i didn't have a copy of the online application Right. To turn and, into the broker, but don't let that hold you up. Just let Fernando know. Yeah, no, but the online application there, uh, even though it's part of the paperwork submittal to uh, contract compliance, um, if it's online, there's not, the, we can't get a copy of it. So there is no deliverable of that. Uh, and you can put on the DA checklist where it says lease application. Whenever you fill out the DA checklist, just put on there online. That way, that way, whoever's doing contract compliance can say, oh, it's an online application, you know? I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah, so but good. that's a good question. All right, well, thank you guys. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Have a good night. <laughs>